Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at creating square frames as well as other hollow objects. We're technically not going to do this within Paint 3D. We're going to do this within a companion application by Microsoft that also comes with Windows 10 free to use called 3D Builder. So if you have Windows 10, it should already be on your machine. If not, you probably can just get it from the App Store for free. So this is 3D Builder down here. The reason why I'm going to use this is because it has two tools that Paint 3D does not have, and I sorely wish that Microsoft would integrate the functionality into Paint 3D. Those two tools are called Hollow and then Split. So what you can do is you can hollow out an object, and then you can splice it up. And by splicing it, like say you take a cube, if you hollow out the inside and then you splice one side and the other, what remains? A frame. So that's the basic principle of what we're going to do. Now, one of the reasons why I didn't make a separate 3D Builder tutorial is because you can make these objects in Paint 3D, open them in 3D Builder, hollow them out, splice them, and then import them back into Paint 3D. Yes, we all like to have a, a single uh, stop solution. Unfortunately, um, don't have it yet. So hopefully Microsoft will integrate this functionality into Paint 3D. Okay, so we're going to click on New Scene. And what we're going to do is we're going to start off with Cube. You just click on Cube and it appears. You have a few tools around down here. So you can move it, you can rotate it, or you could scale it. We really don't need to do any of those since it's symmetrical. So the tools that we're going to look at are in Edit. So here's Split and here's Hollow. As I said, we're going to use these in concert to create a frame as well as other uh, hollow objects, other shells. So first, let's click on Hollow. And what's going to happen is you have the ability to determine the size of the frame. The thickness of the frame so it's hard to see but there's like a translucent very translucent border and then a slightly darker blue border so that's telling you how wide how thick the frame will be so if you notice here you have a slider i'm not sure why they didn't put it right into the workspace itself but if you do this once you let go it says working and now you can more easily see that you have a thicker frame. So for the purposes of this exercise, it really doesn't matter as long as it's hollow. So you then click on to accept it. And you can't see anything because um, we have not sliced it up yet. So it is indeed hollow inside, you just can't tell. So that's where the second tool comes in. We click on split. And you can do a few things with this. When you see the little hand as you grab the pane, you can move that pane up and down to choose where you want this to split. You also have the typical X, Y, and Z rotations if you want to maybe slice this on an angle. We can certainly look at that, but I don't want to overwhelm you with too much. So for now, we're just moving this up and down. And you have a few options. As you can see, it says keep top, keep bottom, and now you can see it's hollow or keep both. So maybe you want to split this object and then do something with it later. Well, why would you want to do that? Well, maybe you try to make a gift box. So you want to split it, but then what you'll do is you'll take the top and scale it, and that way it's slightly bigger and will fit over the bottom. So that's one example of why you would keep both. For our purposes, let's just do keep top, and we're going to go ahead and say split. Can't really tell, but uh, this is hollow. Actually, you can see the reflection down here. But that's not really what we want yet. So it's a, so it's really a three-step process. You're going to hollow it, and then you split it twice. So let's go ahead and click on Split again. This time, we're going to do Keep Bottom. And now it becomes clear that we're turning this into a frame. You can slide this down. And you do split. And there you go. Just like that, you have a frame. Now, once you've made the frame, obviously, you don't have to reinvent it, that you keep this into, maybe you create a folder 
that has uh, your primitives or whatever you want to call them, and then you just reload it every single time you're going to do it. So you load in the uh, frame, and then make sure you save it. When you, when you make changes to it, you save it as a different object. That way you only have to do this once. You create the frame once, and you can use it a gazillion times. So either a window frame or, or, or maybe just one pane within a window or door frame, whatever you want to do. So far, so good. So let's go up to the little menu up here. We'll do save as. And as you can see, it's 3MF. So that's the, the file type that you're going to need when you, say, export your object from 3D Paint for 3D Builder to use. So we'll just call this frame 0418. And now let's go to Paint 3D. Let's do Open, Browse, and there's Frame 0418, and there's your frame. So let's go to 3D View, and you can see that it is indeed a frame. You can add the canvas in if you want. You can click on Canvas, Show Canvas, because maybe you need to center this. The controls are the same as I've mentioned in the other video. Once you're in 3D view, if you right click, you can pivot around. So you could say move this so it's centered or whatever. So just like that, you have a frame. Okay. So let's go ahead and delete that. Now we're back in 3D Builder. And we'll delete this. So the next one we'll go and do go back to insert and this time we're going to use a sphere now paint 3d comes with a sphere a hemisphere but what I'd really like to see is like a hollow hemisphere so like for a mug or a basin or something like that anything that you need to be hollow a half pipe whatever Lots of examples. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go to Edit. We're going to go to Hollow. And this time it's more evident because you can definitely see the blue in there. I think it might have remembered my setting. Probably is because it's it's not the same. It's, it is the same project, so my guess is it just remembered my setting. But that's a little bit thick. So in this case, we want it to be a little bit thinner. And then we click on hollow. And again, you can't tell that anything's been done until you splice it. So let's go ahead and go to split. And now it is more evident that it is hollow. Uh, maybe you want, say, both because maybe um, it's going to be like an egg that opens or a coconut or something like that. And since it's symmetrical, it really doesn't matter if you do keep top or, bot or bottom, because you can always just rotate it. So in this case, if you're not splicing it a second time, then um, it's, it, it's not. Uh, if you're not splicing it a second time, then it really doesn't matter which you keep. All right, so let's do split, and there you go. And just like that, you now have. By the way, I'm, I'm right clicking to move around and unfortunately navigation is not the same between the two applications whereas right click does a pivot in this one it's more of a transform I believe left click yeah left click is the pivot so again typical Microsoft for some reason uh, the way you navigate one program is not the same way you navigate another but again I'm not a MS hater if I was I would not be doing these uh, these tutorials so as you can see just like that you have a basin and so now you've added yet another shape that is not by default in Paint 3D. So we'll go here. Make sure you choose Save As, not Save, because you'll just wipe out your frame. And we'll call this like Basin 0418. Save it. 
Go back to Paint 3D, Menu. Oops, sorry. Well, I chose Insert, but that works just as well. And there's our basin. And there you go. So again, we'll go to 3D View, right click. So as I mentioned, let's go to 3D Shapes. We have the hemisphere, but we don't have a hollow hemisphere, which again, seems to me like a really obvious omission because you could use this again for like a mug, a cup, a basin, a coconut that's been you know broken in half. Uh, whatever, there's just this is a very common shape, so I'm not sure why it's not included. Um, so again, that you, now you've added two shapes. So we've added a square frame and we've added a hollow hemisphere. Oops, sorry about that. And we can delete that. And let's do one more. I don't want to uh, drag this out, but I do want to show you a few different usages for these tools. So I already mentioned that like with the box, uh, with the, the cube, you could keep both the top and the bottom, scale the top out a little bit, and now it will fit on top of the bottom. On, you know, fit over the bottom, like a uh, like say it's a gift box. Maybe we'll do a separate tutorial for that. Let's go ahead and delete that. Let's do wedge. Again, we'll do edit. We do hollow. And let's hollow that out a little bit more. Do OK for hollow. Do sp split. Now, in this case, we need to rotate the tool. So that's another reason why I wanted to do one more, because we, we're just moving the tool up and down. In this case, we actually want to ro rotate the tool. Technically, you could have rotated the object. So if we rotate it like this, and it does kind of snap into place, left click to pivot in this, and it becomes clear what we're doing, and that is we're going to make a hollow triangle. I suppose triangle technically isn't correct since it's a 3D object. Okay. So we do split, but now we want to take the other one out as well. Again, got to rotate. Let's pivot. All right, so I want to rotate this way. So grab the arrow, snap it into place, and you grab it. And then we want to keep top. Oops. Now we, there we go. That's what we want to do. So, so I changed it to, uh, so we, we're keeping top and then I'm just sliding this over because we sliced off the right side. Now we need to slice off the rest, left side so that way you just have the hollow. Okay. Split. Left click to pivot and there you go. You now have a hollow triangle frame. You have a triangular frame. So just for the purpose of completion, save as. We'll call this triframe 0418. Go back to 3D Paint, Menu, and we'll just do Insert again. Triframe, 
And there it is. So 3D view, in this case, right click to pivot rather than left. And now you have a triangle frame. So again, I, I think that these are really obvious shapes that should be here in the 3D shape tool. They're not, all we can do is post comments and say, please add them. I don't know how actively this is being developed. I know this is at very least the second iteration because the first iteration did not have quite as many of these. I think the first only had six objects and they added four more. Uh, there was also not a 3D view. So I believe they are still actively developing it. So if they can just uh, beef up the 3D objects and give us a taper tool, I think this would be a really great contender for at very least making your own placeholder graphics. Or if you're working on a kind of stylized game, like a Minecraft type of game, or my time in Porsche or something like that, where the graphics are not really meant to be high end, they're meant to be kind of blocky and cutesy. Um, I, I think that this, if they can get just a few more features, would be a, uh, a, a good one-stop solution for making a lot of objects. Okay, so I guess that's about it for this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. So uh, we made square frames, triangular frames, and a basin for one of a better term. And I might do a um, another tutorial that, again, focuses on the combination of, of these tools. Like I said, a gift box would be a good one because I really didn't do anything once I imported it into 3D Paint. I just basically rotated around so you could see that, yes, it does indeed import correctly. Um, and uh, so maybe next time, maybe I'll do the gift box demo. So actually take it from beginning to end and not just say, not just extrapolate out what I would do, but to actually show it. So I guess that should do it for this tutorial, and I hope you found it helpful.